G'day. Today we're doing a repair on a V-Dub transporter, turbo diesel, 2006 model, and it's got the six-speed 09K transmission in it. Now what's happening? He when he warms up, he's getting a harsh three-four shift. We've had the scanner on it and we can't get any fault codes in it so we're going to drop the pan and just see what we can find in there we start by taking off this cover to get access and the covers off you can see the pan there now we can drain the oil out of here and these are very similar to the tf 60 sn transmissions the 09k 09G, 09K in the V-dubs. A quick note on these. Um, they actually have separate differential oil to the transmission oil. A lot of front wheel drive vehicles, the oil is common to both. On these it's actually separate. Now there won't be much coming out of there because that's actually the height level for the oil. So just be aware of that. You can take the tube out through the middle there. There'll be a little hex, you can take that out and then all the oil will come out. Now to get the pan off a little bit easier, you can take off this bracket bolt here and this one at the back here and those pipes will just swing out of the way a little bit. So we're going to drop the valve body on this, just take all the electrical connectors off first, you just pinch them and or press that little clip there and they just slide out. And you also have to uncrimp the selector there, they've got like little, a little locking washer there and when you're loosening the 10mm nut make sure you support it, you don't want to bend anything there. We've removed the little bracket on the selector there, left two bolts, one either side of the valve body, let that drain a little bit. And also they have got different lengths, so we like to just leave them in order. There'll be six down one side, six down the other side. I'm on the Atra bulletin there, two different types of valve body for these. These ones have pressure switches and they're the large canister type. And there's the large canister solenoid valve bodies that don't have pressure switches. And finally the one that we have, the small canister solenoids that have no switches. So it's an important thing to check all that, if you're, especially if you're ordering solenoids and or valve bodies. Just for reference, there's the clutch application chart and we have the solenoid application chart and there we have the position of each of the solenoids there are six linear solenoids which are like these and two on off solenoids which are pictured like that as well there's a diagram of the electrical plug there and what sort of resistances you should be getting at those at room temperature. Bear in mind that they will go up, uh, the, uh, the resistance will rise if uh, the temperature of the solenoids increases. So quite often these solenoids fail when they're warmed up which is very similar to what the problem we're getting. And you might find that you just can't get that valve body out because it hits up against this uh, chassis rail there. What you can do is just loosen this back uh, hanger mount and just lift it up. You can see we've lifted it up about inch and a half there and that should be just enough for the valve body to clear that chassis there.
just be aware that that accumulator will come out yeah. and now's a good time to actually do an air pressure test if you can on these little holes here all these ports just make sure you haven't got any leaking there is also a speed sensor here good idea to whiz that out and just give it a clean sometimes you get that metallic swarf stuck to it as well and there we have the air pressure test locations for the ports the different clutches the OSS the output speed sensor now there also are little points there that you need to compare with your valve body if you're changing it that one there is for the case mounted cooler you can see the this holds open and this one's like the one that we have it's got a remote cooler for the valve body and that's the hole there that we're talking about for the cooler for the remote cooler you just want to check it on your new valve body as well and here you'll find on the other opposite end of the solenoids there are actually calibration points there I wouldn't advise to fiddle with them but if in case you do decide to fiddle with them there's some information there uh, how you can increase or decrease the pressures and the overlap of the gear changes but the valve bodies we're, we're putting a new brand new one in there they should already be calibrated to where they should be anyway and we'll just whiz off that speed sensor give it a bit of a clean sometimes you'll find ma magnetic swarf there's a little bit there if you can see it but not too bad but it's still worth cleaning it while you've got it out and of course if you need to replace these you've got to take the valve body to get access got the accumulator piston there see the oil's putrid in it that's a good idea to just clean in there as well just make sure there's no wear marks on it and you'll find in here there's actually a little filter screen so if you're going to pop that out just be careful you don't damage that there's what the little filter screen looks like it's worth popping it out and just giving it a bit of a blowout and clean just don't forget to check that o-ring on there and we'll also whiz off that other speed sensor give that a bit of a clean 8 mil and all back together make sure you put the little wires there through the little brackets where they were don't forget to crimp the nut just so it doesn't come loose double check that you've tightened everything up and put everything in properly especially these little electrical connectors put the pan there give it a good clean make sure you clean the magnets and like we like to do we put these magnets up on the ridges there the idea is so the magnet can work top and bottom you get more surface area of the magnet working collecting that fine metal and we're going to add a neodymium magnet to it extra strong the cleaner you keep the transmission and cooler the longer they last important not to put the magnets anywhere near the solenoids filters back on just double check your work make sure you've tightened everything put everything back to where it was all the electrical connectors back on we're on the tritech lubricants website and we put in the full synthetic max trans if you have a look in the front of the transmission there's a little red plug there that's where you actually fill it and if you remember there's a tube that sits in there you want to have the temperature at between 30 and 50 degrees and just overflowing that tube what we're going to do is we're going to fill it through that filler bolt because quite often you'll break that little plastic um, filler there and you can see there's not much room there either we've got 
five litres in there. You can start it up, just check the oil level. It should be just coming out of there. Bear in mind that that'll be a little bit coming out of that tube. It's still trickling, so we're we're on the ball there. Just out on a test run. Seems to be shifting okay, so we don't need to reset the adapts. All good. We'll just take it for a run, get it to operating temperature, because the adapt Adaptive part of it can't readapt until it gets to operating temperature. I've done about probably 10 15 kilometers, it's up to operating temperature or thereabouts, and it's already shifting a lot better. It was a little bit sort of drawn out shift, and that's slowly improving each time I take off. And we're on 42 degrees. We'll just check the fluid level. Might just need a little bit more. Just put one in and then just pull that hose off and see if it's coming out. It's going to be easier to pull it off that. And it's just coming out now, you can see that. And that's about right. And just a thin stream like that. And still on 44. 30 to 50, about 40 degrees is ideal. Anyway, hope that's helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave any comments, suggestions or questions in the section below. Throw us a beer if any of this information has helped. One other thing I'll just add, we just we uh, fitted a transmission oil cooler. The heat exchanger was just fitted here and we've completely bypassed that and put a external, a little bit hard to see there. That's how we've plumbed the fittings and the hose goes up there. You can see the cooler, transmission oil cooler there, right in front. Anyway, thank you for watching.